I have opponents in this race who do not want to change the Constitution. But I believe it's a lot easier to change the Constitution than it would be to change the word of the living God. And that's what we need to do is to amend the Constitution so it's in God's standards rather than try to change God's standards so it lines up with some contemporary... Yeah. Mike Huckabee. No, right? How is it even a possibility? They had the Michigan primaries last night. Mitt Romney won for the Republicans, the Democrats for whatever is uncontested. I don't know. It basically doesn't count. I really don't care about that, actually. The campaign's going on. The Republicans still have no um, real front runner. But that is scary. I don't think Mike Huckabee can win. For all the talk about the evangelical vote and uh, the added weight that they clearly carried in the last two elections, I don't think... At least I hope. <laughs> I really don't think that as a country we will have a Baptist minister as our president. I mean, it's quite clear, uh, you know, the division between church and state is uh, getting a little mixed up there. But I don't know. I don't really. I didn't really want to talk about that today. Actually, that's a minor thing. But keep following. Keep following the uh, election process. I really wanted to talk about the need for revolution. Truly and honestly, the need for revolution in the United States. But where is it going to come from? This uh, I read a paper yesterday. I'll include the link to it. Um, it's really good. This guy's really readable. I saw him... Um, shit. Give me one second. Yes, sorry. Murray, uh, Murray Bookin, I think. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still not sure how to pronounce it exactly. He has a lot of great discourse on anarchy. And he discusses this in one of his papers. This one was written in 1991. He was currently writing a book on the Spanish anarchist government of the 30s. Now, I personally don't know a whole lot about it, but he was analyzing the reasons why... Because that is... Because that's the one... One of the few concrete examples of how anarchism worked, at least on a regional scale. Maybe if not even a... Maybe if not a fully national scale, it worked on... In a large regional scale. And conceivably, I don't think it's impossible that if we can... If we can get to that point, that we can arrange these regions to cooperate with each other as well. If we can get to the point where people are cooperating on one-on-one -on -one basis, we could get these, um, you know, regions to cooperate too. So he talks about one thing that's different, and also one thing that was different from the Russian Revolution, even though the revolution was adopted by the communists. That was a truly spontaneous revolution of the workers because of the inequity that they were subjected to. What was different there? One of the, the biggest thing that he really talks a lot about and I think that hits home to me, is the fact that we don't have an intelligentsia like they did in those societies. We do in the sense that we have quite a body of scholarly works and places where people can go to learn about these things. But he says that they, these people are relegated to doing just that. They only exist in the university setting. It really differs from ancient views of what a successful and politically active person is. Uh, I mean, if you go back to Aristotle, and that time, the idea was uh, put out that the best ruler for a nation would be these kind of philosopher kings. They have, they have a basis for that, for the type of person. Of course, obviously, I don't agree with... <laughs> still, that's a limited number of people governing everybody. And also, according to Aristotle, too, um, the only people who could be considered citizens. You had to be successful and contribute, basically economically to everything, be successful, or at least, you know, be able to provide for yourself. So that way you have time to philosophize and do these things. You, you take care of your um, base needs. And they had a much closer connection to base needs back then. So if you take care of your base needs, you have time to philosophize and conceptualize these moral issues. So that way when you encounter them in your life, you'll know what to do. But one other thing that I wanted to say that I feel is really important is that Aristotle also thought to be considered a citizen you'd have to be a landowning male over the age of 40. And he also felt that slaves were necessary for the proper functioning of society. So those workers could take care of our base needs and that would leave us yet even more time to philosophize. Which, I mean, clearly I don't agree with. So he had some bad stuff too. And also... To be a citizen, you are required to take an active part in your in the politics that you're involved with. That's one thing that I uh, do like about what he says. It's not it's not enough for Aristotle for someone to passively subject to the social contract that they're born into. It is your responsibility to contribute to the discourse. How does that relate to today? 
in those times, especially well, especially during the Rus Russian Revolution, from what I understand, the word intelligentsia is uh, has Russian derivations. He describes the students today and the students that were taking this class as people who were focused on what they were going to do with their life specifically. It's like, okay, I'm going to college, I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to study medicine, I'm going to do this, 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 and then once I have that secure and I feel confident in that, then I will philosophize, <laughs> you know, and flex my ethical muscle, I guess. The intelligentsia, especially like the revolutionaries, like uh, Bakunin, saw their first duty as to engage in revolution and incite revolution. And then they justified how everything else would work towards that aim. Which, for me, it's something that I would not engage in. I don't advocate armed revolt, namely because I wouldn't want the government that would be put in place through an armed revolt. Um, and I don't think anybody else would either. And that was a problem with the Russian Revolution as well. After the Bolsheviks had well established their power, they, or Stalin, I believe, uh, systematically executed and arrested, sent off to Siberia, the intelligentsia, because they are a threat. They are a threat to power since, <laughs> since their primary job is the revolution, I guess. But it speaks, uh, mainly, I guess all that relates again, because it speaks to the lack of, you know, adventure in philosophical sense of people of my generation, really. We have, especially in America, you know, we have so many distractions with the media and everything, but I mean, what can I do? All I, all I can do is try to change it myself. I have this theater company that I just started up. No, I'm, I'm not really an activist, but I'm going to try to use that to spread a discourse on political ideas. I don't want to spread my political viewpoint. I want to inspire a discourse because I have uncertainties about what I believe <laughs> still, and I want to discuss it. I think it's important to use other people's viewpoints to help you make up your mind. You don't have to, you know, suck them down like baby food, like people like... Huckabee would like you to. Is it Governor Huckabee? Is he already a governor of some state? Uh, so I'm gonna try to do stuff artistically to spread the word. I'm trying to do things in a direct discourse way with these YouTube videos and I, I will undoubtedly become a lot more active in politics and sort of a lot more direct action things rather than <laughs> reading all these uh, theoretical papers and trying to design a society from there. You can find individual instances to be an activist. Um, I hate to plug this corporate magazine, but I'll just throw this in here really quickly. Uh, Rolling Stone. This article right here, Anarchist Superstar. And yes, that's Johnny Depp too. Just, I haven't read that interview. But that's a really good article about this guy, Brad Wills, or Brad Will. Yeah, Brad Will, sorry. He was just a, he was an anarchist activist. And from what I've read in here, it seems like he was the real deal. And he was just killed by the police in Mexico, and it's unfortunate. But if people can rally around, if people can rally around a figure like that, then I don't know. Maybe the ends justify the means. But we need to keep an open discourse going. Thanks. I am Jack Scolan. I'll see you next time.